video tutorial on how to run HDCMB once you have your formatted input files. Assuming you have already downloaded the program, locate it on your machine and double click to run. If you do not have the software, it can be downloaded from dailylab.org. That's D-A-L-E-Y-L-A-B period O-R-G. Once HDCMB is running, there are a few optional parameters that you can select. The first, percent required for overlap, is the percentage by which the two CMBs must overlap to be considered in the same family. This will be a percentage of the length and base pairs of the smaller CMB. The default for this is 40%. We'll use the default. The percent required for family is the percent of overlap required between two CMBs for them to be considered in the same family. This again is percent of the length in base pairs of the smaller CMB. The default here is 99%. If you leave these blank, the default will automatically be used. Once you have entered these parameters, you have to tell HDCMB where your files are located. Your input files should be stored in a directory all on their own with no other files present. I have my files in my Genome Canada data directory under HDCMB in. Here I have all of my chromosome files already formatted as CSV files. To get the exact location of these files, I can right click on any one and select get info. From here, the location is under the where head. Copy this and paste it into the location on HDCMB. To paste into this box, you can use Command V on a Mac or Control V on a Windows machine. If you're running on Windows, to get the location, right click on any file and select Copy Address. Once you've pasted the location, it's important to add one last slash at the very end. If you want graph files generated for this run, make sure the Generate Graph Files box is checked. Same goes for the UCSC track files. If you already have files for this data, you can unselect the checkboxes. However, for this run, I would like to generate everything. Once all of this is done, you can select Run. Before I do that, I'd like to point out there's no output folder present currently with my files. When I select Run, one is immediately created. This is where all of your output files will be stored. Don't open this until the program has finished running. I am running this program on sample data that has over 12,000 CMB events. This is a very large number and I will let the program run to completion so you can see how long it takes to run HDCMB. As you can see, HDCMB is now complete. That run took less than two minutes. If you're running smaller amounts of data, it will go faster, and it will also go faster if you don't need to generate graph files or track files. Once done, click OK. Now you can open your output file to look at all of the output. At the very bottom of the output file, there is a folder for the UCSC track files. All of your tracks are stored there. If you would like to run the program again, you should remove the output folder and put it somewhere new. You might even want to rename it to give it a more unique name, such as output September 8, 2012. The next time the program runs, it will again create an output file in this directory, so you want to make sure 
that you have removed the old output file so it doesn't get erased. If you would like to change all of the parameters, you can reset the form, or you can just change specific parameters. To show you what reset does, I'll click it. It only erases the text files. It does not really erase all of your output files, just these text boxes. When you're done running HDCMB, click Exit to close the program. Now you have your output files. For information on how you can use them to learn more about your data, check out our other tutorials on visualizing the graph files and using track files. Thank you very much and enjoy HDCMB.